One of the lessons I've learned in woodworking is that it's so much more dangerous to use a dull tool than a sharp tool and your work just doesn't go anywhere near as well. What happens with a dull chisel or a dull plane is that you end up forcing it and in forcing it, one, you're increasing the chance that something bad is going to happen because you're pushing on that tool harder than you should have to. Two, your workmanship is going to suffer because you're not getting the result from that tool that you should get. So really the lesson out of this is you got to keep your tools nice and sharp. I'm going to walk you through a bunch of different approaches here. Some are some freehand sharpening methods that I've mastered. Some are taking advantage of mechanical devices to help you make sure you get the right angle. We're going to talk about plain irons, bench chisels, lathe chisels, carving chisels, all tools that really need to be kept nice and sharp so that they work well. First thing I want to talk about is plain irons. And I've got a rule here that also applies to your bench chisels, which is don't forget the back of the tool. We need to do an operation to start with here that's called lapping the tool. And in lapping the tool, what that means is we're going to make sure that the back of this is nice and flat. If the back is flat, we can expect more out of the front. It's going to perform better. Key to this is simply holding the plane iron or the bench chisel onto a nice flat surface so it has the opportunity to flatten the back. Looking something like this. Now here's a tip on a power sharpener like this one. What we want to do is start high and then lower into it so that we don't take a chance of rolling that cutting edge. I'm on a 220 grit abrasive right now. Look at, we can see by where that abrasive mark is, how much of the plane iron we've contacted. I'm gonna go just a little more. It's not gonna to take too much more to have this set. Start high, roll down. That's great, we're done with that abrasive at this point. We're ready to move on. Now one of the things we can do to maintain on a power sharpener like this one, maintain our abrasive is keep it clean. Just like sand and wood, if that clogs up with dust, in this case metal filings, it's not gonna work as well. Abrasive cleaner works great for this. I've got a 220 grit on this side. And it's a glass plate, so I know the glass is nice and flat, which is a great benefit when we're sharpening in general, and especially when we're lapping the back of a plane iron or a chisel. Flip this over, now I'm going to have access to 400 grit abrasive. Let me give you a little tip here. Right there on the edge, what I like to do is use a felt tip, and I write the number of the abrasive so it's right side up for that face. That helps me keep track, so I knew that when I was oriented this way, I was using my 220, oriented this way, now we're going to do 400. And the approach is going to be identical to what we just did. Start high, rock down. Coming along for us. That is looking great already. Let's clean up our abrasive. Once we've got the back set, Let's have a look at what we need to do with the bevel. First part of this is we need to know what angle we're going to sharpen at so that we can duplicate that. And a real handy way to do that is with an angle gauge. And pretty simple concept. What we're going to do is simply put the cutting tool into our kind of sawtooth looking detents, see which one it matches up with. That's going to tell us where we're at. 
and what we need to duplicate. 25 degrees, this is what we have here. Pretty common angle for cutting tools like this. Next step, duplicate that angle. These sharpeners or sharpener guides with rollers on them, great way to make sure that you get good repeatable results when you're sharpening. Because what it does is it allows the tool to project out a fixed distance, then keeping it at that distance, it's going to duplicate the angle that we're after. So here's how this works. We go into the jig, come up to the 25 degree setting because that's what we just measured. Lock that in place. I'm going to flip back over, so I'm using my 220 side. Now we'll see what happens here. Prior to this, there was some freehand sharpening that happened on this plane iron. Problem that people can have with freehand sharpening, including me, is that you don't always get your edge nice and straight and true. And we can see that a little bit there. Right now, we're producing a dead straight line because of the benefit of the jig. And as a result, this is what happened with our freehand sharpening is that bevel wasn't quite, quite as straight as it could have been. Stop and flip. So this approach, got a couple things going on here, the key points out of this. Lap the backs. It's great to use a device to help you duplicate those angles and make sure you're doing them the same every time. Walk the cutting tool through a series of grits until you get it nice and sharp. I'm at 400 right now. We can actually take this a step further up into the micro mesh range. And look at how good we're looking already. So this gives you the technique, but before I'm ready to use this plain iron, I'm gonna walk it up through some finer grits to make sure it's ready to cut. One more step here, just in case we kicked up a little burr on the back, it's a good idea to bring this down onto the abrasive disc, knock that burr off, start high, come down, That'll take care of that burr on the back. That's some advice on plain irons. Let me show you a little bit different approach for bench chisels and what we're looking for there. Next step here, I'm working on my bench chisel. And I want to do a couple things for you here. One is, I mentioned earlier the idea of taking this to a finer abrasive. I've got a thousand grit on the bottom of the wheel. 3,600 currently on the top. And you can see where we're going with this, getting a finer and finer finish on the lapping. Can just about see myself in there and on the bevel on this side. Now let's talk about bench chisels. Step one, once again, we wanna know what angle it is that we're trying to cut at here. A couple tips on that. One thing I was taught was that if you're primarily working with hardwoods, a 30 degree angle is a little bit more robust. 25 degree angle is good in softwoods. However, 25 degrees is a very common sharpening angle. Now we can mix both worlds here. What I was just doing was working on my bevel at 25 degrees by sliding that up in. Now what's happening is I'm hitting the thousand grit abrasive on the bottom of the wheel. Now, we can introduce to this what's called a micro bevel. And the way to do that is we sharpen the bevel at 25, but we kiss just the tip at 30. That's done by changing the angle 
to 30 degrees. Kind of second verse, same as the first. Now have a look at what's happening there. It's subtle, but see how I've only touched the very tip of the chisel. That's my micro bevel. What that does is it makes it really easy to maintain the cutting edge on this chisel, the micro bevel does, because now when I come back and I wanna kiss that to just refresh the edge and do a little bit of sharpening, I don't have to take metal off the entire bevel. I only have to take it off of the micro bevel. Now let me give it a little pass on that 3600 on top so you can see what that's gonna to start to look like on our lapping. Kind of turning my chisel into a mirror here, that's pretty cool. One of the things, regardless of what you're sharpening, you really want to be careful about is any prospect of overheating. Some devices, like this one, have incorporated aspects into it where it's going to help prevent the chisel from overheating. Ways to take uh, some of the heat off the chisel through heat sinks. So just be really careful as you're doing power sharpening that you're not taking any chance of overheating the tip of the chisel. Like I said, some devices like this one have already built that in for you and taken care of that aspect. Next thing, let's get away from these straight edges and look at a curved edge on a carving chisel. Next tool we're going to have a look at is a carving gouge. And we're going to do a little bit of freehand and a little bit of freehand with training wheels here. So first off, let's have a look at freehand. I'm running my thousand grit abrasive on here. And on a freehand pass like this, what I want to do is lay that bevel onto my sharpening device so that the bevel is on there nice and flat. And the key with round tools, curved tools like this, is to roll through the entire cutting edge. What we don't want to do is sharpen, 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 sharpen. What we'll end up with are bevels on the back side, and the tool's not going to work very well. So we've got to get this to roll, one fluid motion. Here we go. See how we're doing? That really looks great. Now, what if you're not 100% sure you're holding the bevel right. Let me give you a tip here. And the tip is to use a felt tip. And before you start, color that in. That's gonna give us an indicator. Now we'll come back, do our freehand pass. And check your work. Now what that shows me is that I had the handle up too high. I took material off of the tip, not off the heel, so I need to bring my handle down just a little bit, make a correction, try again. Much better. The felt tip is a great way to gauge if you really are hitting the entire bevel of your tool. Now, freehand with training wheels, what's that all about? What I mean by that is using a tool rest like this one. So instead of just supporting this with my fingers, I can support it on a tool rest by controlling how much or how little chisel is projecting beyond the rest. That helps me with the angle. And it does take a variable out, a variable out of the sharpening equation. So if you find that you're not quite comfortable with just completely freehanding it, try a tool rest like this and that'll really help you. Nice. Now, on to some more curved tools. Next stop is gonna be at lathe chisel land. 
and we're going to have a look at sharpening a lathe chisel using a real unique device. It's actually slotted. We're going to take a completely different approach on this lathe chisel. This is a half inch gouge. I'm going to show you a freehand approach for this. In this case, what we're going to do is we are going to sharpen on the bottom of the disc and the disc is slotted so we can see through it. So this is pretty cool. It's a freehand operation, but you can see what you're doing the whole time. It really makes it easy to follow the bevel and the curve and make sure we get that lathe gouge nice and sharp. Now let's do our felt tip trick again. Kind of a tongue twister. And then looking down through those spokes, you see what happens here. There's our contact. And I'm just manipulating the handle of the chisel to hold this in the right spot to con consistently take that felt tip off. That really did a nice job bringing that edge where we want it. So this chisel is going to cut just great freehand work, but because we can see what we're doing, it makes it really easy to follow the curve. Now, one of the things I want to talk about before we wrap up here is sharpening or honing versus grinding. So definitions here, if I'm grinding, I'm reshaping the tip. If I'm sharpening or honing, I'm just refreshing the edge. What it really comes down to is abrasive. So when you're starting your work, you want to make sure that you're using the right abrasive for what you're doing. Something real aggressive. This one is set up with a 80-120 combination for doing some reshaping, some grinding, all the way up to finer wheels like we've talked about, or honing with leather, stropping with leather like we've got here to really finish that edge up. So Make sure you're set up with the right abrasive for what it is you're trying to do and make sure to keep your work looking good and your tools cutting safely that you're keeping your tools nice and sharp. Mm -hmm.